All right, so let's talk double-digit upsets. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's uh, also start alphabetically here. And we're going to go in the SEC. And we're going to take Florida as a 450 on the, uh, money line play over Tennessee. Double-digit. I think they're a 14-point dog in this one. Uh, and, look, Tennessee's coming off uh, a very uh, disappointing loss last week to Arkansas. So having them lose back-to-back -back is not going to be an easy deal. And I get that. Uh, what I'm just trying to do here is say to myself, if Billy Napier is going to save his job, if he's going to actually back up what we've seen the last couple of weeks, because I think a lot of us probably felt a couple of weeks ago that, well, they're probably going to go one and one. And you know what? Maybe they, maybe they do lose to Mississippi State. Maybe this is maybe they're just going to fire Billy Napier in the next few weeks. But yet they've won the last two. And they've been pretty pretty solid doing it. Matter of fact, they were dog at home against Central Florida last week, the team who okay. lost to Colorado the week before. So nobody expecting Florida to do much. So that's what I'm saying. This is more of I kind of want to catch Florida in a good spot if Billy Napier can, can truly save and resurrect his career in Florida at Gainesville. I want to be able to say, well, I was there and I took that game when, when, when everybody thought that Florida was still not good enough. Um, and keep this in mind, too. The Gators are 6-1 and one, straight up and against the spread in the last seven years against Tennessee. So they have owned this series, including an upset win last year at Gainesville. Uh, Tennessee, meanwhile, 0-10 against the spread versus SEC teams off back-to-back straight-up ATS wins, which is exactly what Florida is off of. Uh, by the way, it looks like Florida is going to be getting their star-wide receiver back. That's the latest. It's possible Eugene Wilson returns. That would be a big boost for Florida and their passing game. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and say maybe Florida um, – you know, this is this, – let's just put it this way. This would be, wouldn't be one of those games that I would just go, oh, I'm going to put a boatload of money in Florida and take 14. Because, of course, if Tennessee goes out lightning and they respond from the loss last week, we could see them beating Florida 38 to 14 or something like that. But I just think that this is a game where maybe if Florida is, like I said, better than we think, then uh, I'm, well, I just want to be there if it happens. But look at this scenario this way, Greg. If uh, what happens if Florida beats Tennessee here? Suddenly, Florida is a pretty damn good football team. Their only two losses are what the A and M and uh, uh, who was the other one? Miami. Okay, that's not bad. Two losses to two no. top twenty-five teams. Suddenly, at with the record like they have, five and two, they're a top twenty-five team. And then suddenly, if they keep the ball rolling here, Billy Napier is looking for a raise. He's not looking for a team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is a huge game for, I think, for yes. Florida and Billy Napier. On the other side, Tennessee just had their bubble burst. And you, you find this so often with football teams that start out real good and watch any of these 5-0 and fat cats that fall this week. If they come favored the next week, look out. It's a bubble burst situation against those guys. Become They become deflated the next football game as well. That could be the case for Tennessee here. And I would play Florida on the money line in this game. Oh, all right. Excellent. Well, in case you have not checked out our, uh, our, our Friday night video, and we would recommend that you do, uh, two of my recommended upset options, best options, are available on that video. So that's the first video that uh, we posted on the channel. It has the Utah State game, and it also has the Northwestern game. Uh, so, again, those are on Friday. If you're watching this on Saturday morning, those games are already over. And, oh, I hope I, have, I hit at least one of them. Uh, but there's one more to go. So, so we've gone through three. Two of them are on the Friday night video. Again, Utah State, Northwestern. We just talked about Florida. We're going to go back to the SEC. And I just think this is one of those ups, double-digit upsets that I just have to take. I mean, we can all – and we have constantly respected what Mark Stoops has done in Kentucky. He's done such a tremendous job with that program. And finally, not only do they almost beat Georgia, but then they come out a, a week later, a week or two later, and upset Ole Miss. I mean, what a job. What a job Mark Seuss has been doing. While saying that, this is Vanderbilt. And I just mentioned before in the, in the upset uh, segment how I had Vanderbilt in there in their 17 point dog roll as an upset. I think they were 750 on the money line. They lose an overtime to Missouri. So I, I missed out on that. I lose 10 days of electricity. So I had no chance to even throw a buck or two on the upset over Alabama. I'm not sure I would have anyway, but now I get them again. Now, hopefully I don't miss the one 
and go on the other two. But that's what I'm doing. I'm going back on Vanderbilt because they're about four to one on the money line. And by the way, the last time Vanderbilt uh, was on the road at Kentucky, they were a 17 point dog in 2020, 22, and they pulled off the upset. So let's see if they can do it again. Kentucky is 0-7 with rest versus opponents with a greater than 400 winning percentage, with by, which Vanderbilt is. They're 3-2. And, and they're also, Kentucky, 1-7 against the spread off a straight-up road dog win. That's exactly the spot Kentucky's in here. It's a big number. I love the points. But I say, why not? Why not take a chance with Vanderbilt, Paggia, and, of course, if anything, Jerry Kill is like the – the, the coach uh, uh, whisperer when he's done with these programs is amazing. So I'm taking Vandy as a double digit option uh, option play. You know, if, if we had, uh, we have psychologists, but if we had a football psychologist and he can explain to us why things happen the way they do in the world of college football, I think one of the patterns that he would identify is the fact that certain teams play really well as underdogs and certain teams play really poorly as favorites. It's just an identity that the football team takes on. They kind of, uh, they're better than what the odds makers anticipate. Hence Kentucky pulling the upset, almost pulling two major upsets. Vanderbilt better than the odds makers anticipate doing just that as well themselves. But can Kentucky carry the weight in a football game like that? This is the question here. This is a big step up game for Kentucky. They're going to likely win the football game, but I don't know if they're going to get beat the spread in this football contest or not. All right. So then as far as those double digit upsets, Mark, officially Florida, Northwestern, Utah state and Vandy, you're not going Vandy. You like Florida, which one of those three, Florida, Northwestern, Utah state, would you go with the most? I'm going to go Florida Gator. They got a little bit of mojo going here right now. And Tennessee's in this, what just happened to us? Uh, you know, like, uh Oh, what's just happened. And kind of like, uh, looking over their shoulder to make sure they don't make the same mistakes this week they did last week. And you know what? They ultimately end up doing just that. Give me Florida for the upset special here. 